we are back. It is the Gag Order Radio Show here on the Gag Order Network. In studio is myself, Jay, and alongside me is John Doherty. Still. And still in the booth is Dimitri. Yep. And uh, we have been uh, talking to uh, our guests uh, during the break. It was actually a really fun conversation, conversation that you guys aren't <laughs> privy to. But uh, we will choose three people, or he will choose three people, however it will happen, and they will have the ability to ask one question each once we are on the next break. Um, but until then, I'm going to introduce the man, the myth, the up-and-coming legend, Big Tim <laughs> Kellums. What's up, everybody? Big Tim Kellums here. You're really hyping me up over there, man. You're making me feel honored and getting a little rosy in the cheeks. You want us to, like, tone it down? You want to be like, uh, so who is it? What's his name? We got this guy. I Big don't know. Tim. Does, does he hums a lot. I don't know. He's yeah, actually I'm, I'm a professional hummer, man. Yes. That is that sounds inappropriate. Um, <laughs> he's uh, the professional whistler. Uh, that movie was awesome. Yes. <laughs> But a big Tim, Ke- like, what do you go by? Do we just call you BTK? Wasn't that a killer? Okay, yes. th- this is funny. I'm actually going to give you a little bit of a quick background on this. My original name was Big Tim, and then I would Google myself from time to time, and I was like, yo, there's other Big Tims out there. What can I do to make sure I'm the only Big Tim? So I'm like, you know, let me just add my last name to the mix. So I added my last name. And now I'm Big Tim Kellums, but I don't want to be called BTK because of the whole MGK thing. And it's kind of an inside joke with some people because, you know, I'm the white rapper. He's the white rapper. But if you want to call me BTK, it's cool. But Big Tim Kellums is the official name as of now. I, I would think uh, that you wouldn't want to be called BTK because there was a serial killer. Yeah. There was, was a serial oh, killer called BTK. BTK well, that's kind of cool because I'm killing the tracks, man. <laughs> no, I don't I don't think you understand what cool is. <laughs> <laughs> BTK killer. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, for all of those, if you can hear our voice, you're tuning in. That's how that works. That's how it works. You're you're hearing it. So for all of those that are asking, how do I tune in? If you're hearing our voice on the site, you're tuning in. It's happening. So anyways, Big Tim, um, yeah. uh, listening to your tracks, I did say uh, I was talking to John about you earlier, and I said you have this um, rock meets a bit of hip hop pop swag to what you're doing. He said Lincoln Park, and that's exactly like where some of your like your, your style comes from. It's it sounds awesome what I heard. Um, Thank you. But who inspired you? Right off the bat, who inspired Man, you? Man, there's a real, you know, let me tell you, there's a real reason why it kind of has that rockish feel to it because Growing up my entire life, my father took me to all these crazy rock concerts, man. I'm talking like everything from the classics such as Aerosmith and um, Def Leppard and uh, Kiss to the, you know, more of the new age kind like, you know, System of a Down, Core, Marilyn Manson. So I went to all these crazy rock and metal concerts growing up and that's what got me really into making music. But I, I then figured out that I really couldn't sing all that well and I couldn't play an instrument to save my life. So I was like, you know what, what can I still do that's still a form of music? So I decided to rap, but I, I try to incorporate that rock feel as much as I can because that's what I, you know, was raised on. Yeah, well, it shows in your music. It's great. It's great to actually hear, you know, somebody trying a little bit of infusion, something that we heard kind of do See, well in now, the 2000s. I like well, his pers- 2000s. I like his persistence. He knows he's terrible. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't give up. Yes. He doesn't that's give up. That's right. You know, you know, you got to when life gets hard, you push back harder, never let go. I know I'm the worst artist on the planet, but I'm not going to let that stop me. You hear me? I'm not. <laughs> and nor should it. Well, just because <laughs> that's that's how I feel as a skinny person. I'm the worst skinny person there is, but I'm the best at trying to beat. No, Dimitri. No, what? Uh, I eat burgers. all the time. Okay. Yeah, you eat a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry. Never mind. All right. So I'm a fat person and I'm staying that way. Trying not to. God damn it. <laughs> you know, you want to know something funny, man? I used to actually, I got the name Big Tim because I used to weigh almost 300 pounds. So there's oh. hope for you, man. There's hope. Oh, how'd you go from 300 to what we're seeing now? AIDS. I cut it off. Oh. Your, lo- your t- lower half? I, 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 <laughs> your I, took, I, I grabbed the fat, I yanked, and I sawed it off, man. That's exactly what I tried like to do seven. once. Like seven. It didn't work out well. <laughs> no, I actually, what I did was I, I cut out all the... You know, a lot of the calories people get are from just drinking liquids, man. So I completely cut out all liquids except for water because you kind of need something to survive. So I drink nothing but water. That helps shed off most of the weight. And then uh, everything after that, man, was just, you know, cut out carbs, no noodles, no macaroni, no uh, rice and potatoes. Just kind of stick to white meats as possible, chicken and fish. Um, you know, no red meats, no steak, no hamburger, stuff like that. And just time, give time, you know, time, and then everything starts to shed off. Or you could always saw it off as well. 
Nutrition and more with Big T Callums <laughs> at five. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, no, that's, I tried doing that. I shed off, uh, I shed a lot of weight, actually. I was 350, and I shed off, uh, shed off. I shed a lot of weight. Congrats. With, uh, cut out Good. carbs, so, thanks. Yeah. It's just, this is my sixth fat, and I don't think I have another, like, comeback. There's no bounce back after this, so I gotta <laughs> lose this and stay, small, like, depressing. small. It has to happen like You're that. depressing. I, I, it's the truth. I gotta do that. You're I have depressing. to stay small for the sake of my shirts. Um, <laughs> so, uh, when it, uh, a lot of your fans are wondering, um, <laughs> places you'll do shows, again, the Eugene thing that came up again. Yeah. Um, but w when you go on stage, what inspires you? What's the spark? Oh, man, when I go on stage, what inspires me? I, you know, when I'm up there, man, I used to kind of go into a trance because it was just so just awestruck to me. And I kind of used to not see anything and I kind of just went crazy and did it but now I've trained myself to really hold my composure up there and what really inspires me and gives it the spark is just the energy and the look on the people's faces when you first hit that stage or you start doing something amped up and exciting and you could see them really getting into it just like I look for the teeth man when you can see the teeth and the big smiles and the energy that's what really gets me into it man that's awesome yeah, for us we usually uh, just ask them not to like stab us we say well, that too. I mean, huh? I crowd surf a lot, and one of my fears is like, yo, what if some crazy person like jabs a knife in my ribs while I'm doing this? <laughs> yeah, now that you said it, don't crowd surf. Yeah, I was just thinking that as I said yeah, that. Yeah, now so, that yeah. you said it, do not crowd surf. That's just it is ill advised from here on out. <laughs> just send your shoe. <laughs> like, just let it go. Yeah, I'll get a crowd surf, uh, crowd surfing stunt double that'll just. I'll go off stage for like a half a second. He'll run off with the same outfit as me and just jump in there, man. And Why not? Up. Hey, <laughs> come on! There's stunt doubles for everything else. Why not? Exactly, dude. Crowd surfing knifed. stunt doubles. Yeah, huh? for getting knife. For getting knife. Yes, my knife double. Uh, I mean, he could wear like a vest or something, but like, <laughs> protect them. They, they stab me in my vest. toes. Big Tim. <laughs> they stab me in my toes. Know, yes. Right. That would, that would be something else. Um. Uh, another thing I, I have to ask, what was your biggest performance? Because you've been at this for a while, so what was your biggest performance? Um, your most awe-inspiring performance where you're like, oh, my God, I'm here. Well, we did the Music is Art Festival with the Goo Goo Dolls in Buffalo, New York, and that was like, man, there was thousands of people there, and the whole festival, it was just downpouring rain, and we thought ahead of time that, you know, the rain was going to get it all messed up and nobody was going to come out, but let me tell you, Rain does not stop the music, and the rain does not stop the people that want to hear the music. Because they were there, and not only were they there, but they were ten times crazier, jumping around and going crazy in this downpour. So we performed a concert, opened up for the Goo Goo Dolls. We co headline We went out right before them, and we performed in the downpouring rain. And there was just all these people, and the rain made it even crazier. And it was it was probably like one of the highlights of my life, man. So no. it was. It has to be the Music Is Art Festival in. Buffalo, New York. Now you say we. Now, who do you have a normal backing band? Do you have a group? Yeah, I actually, I most of you know the recordings in the studio. Um, I actually recorded a place called Twin Turbo Studios out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Jim Agrippi runs that studio. He's also my drummer. So I have a drummer. Jim Agrippi's my drummer. His name's Jimbo Neutron. I have a, uh, a hype man who's also my brother from another mother, T Booze. I have a DJ. Most of the time, it's DJ Acid. Um, so we got the DJ, DJ Acid, the drummer, Jimbo Neutron, the hype man, t -Boos, and my camera guy is always up on stage with us too, Don Johnson. So we kind of have a little group up there as well, and we incorporate the rock feeling even more by adding and incorporating the live drums during the set. Oh, that's, that works really well. Yeah. Um, so for your, your project, somebody was asking, what's the process? How do you go about getting to the point of where you're going to release the album? Well... Well, there's a, okay, let me think of how to really explain this. Basically, man, I took like a two-year hiatus because I, I basically, I started as a musician, you know, I started gaining my fan base as a musician. Then I started really getting into uh, social media and making these rant videos. And when my rant videos really started blowing up, I kind of lost myself as a musician. So basically right now I have this whole EP on the back burner because I don't want to just put it out right now because I don't want to put something out that I think, you know, deserves the most notoriety and have it not hit what it needs to because people aren't really into the relevance 
a relevancy of my music because I kind of took a hiatus from it for a bit. So basically right now to amp that up, I've been leaking songs off of the off of the EP and I got like three music videos I'm going to be putting out just to kind of push music back into their faces and ears and music videos to say, hey, look, remember me? I'm making music. I'm making music again. So it builds the relevancy of the music. So basically to summarize it so I'm not mumbling, I'm going to leak some songs. I'm going to put some music videos out. And once you're ready, and know that I'm making music, apparently, again, I'm going to put out the EP. <laughs> okay. Woo! I'm, yeah. exhausted. I'm exhausted. He had a lot of energy behind I'm that. I'm exhausted. Yeah, I'm exhausted, too, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, again, thank you for coming on today. Um, You're welcome. But, uh, so, where are you going? Like, are you setting up tours? Are you going to do colleges? Or are you just going to be, like, uh, out and about or whatever? Um, well, I actually had a tour set up with uh, my good friend Stephen Joseph. He's like an internet sensation. He's he's a he's a, a guy that wears all this makeup with his crazy long green neon hair. He's really cool. He um he's my boy. We were gonna tour together with Blood on the Dance Floor and Broken Side in June, which is next month. But I'm not gonna go on that tour because I'm gonna stay behind and kind of work on with what I gotta work on with myself. Because going on the road, man, like if you're not ahead of your stuff and ahead of your schedule. You get set back because it's hard to do stuff while you're on the road. You you got to drive, you got to sleep, and you got to perform. That's all you have time for. So maybe I'll do some tour dates in June. I'm supposed to do tour dates for Canada in July, and then there's also a European tour in the works, possibly for August. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's all with Stephen Joseph. So Stephen Joseph is one of my best friends, and we we tour a lot together. We make music together. So that's that's what we got cooking off as far as tours go. Yeah, I'm seeing Stephen Joseph. He's got really wild hair yeah his, his hair is makeup. crazy and makeup is crazy yeah <laughs> wow it looks like a like an old glitter band that's what, that's what i'm saying <laughs> i see like an old glitter band it's like star desk um, yeah he's something else man yeah as long as you're having fun that's all that matters as long as you're Absolutely. having a blast um yeah. so i can go two ways with this we can continue talking and have a regular conversation, or we can start delving into some of the interesting questions that your fans have been sending us, because there's a lot. Um, I think we should go with the interesting questions. All right, so there's, there's a... I just, I don't... I vote for trivia. <laughs> no, is that not... Are we not doing that? We should, we should get Trivial Pursuit out and just see who wins. How tall is Mount Everest? Who was go. the captain on the Mayflower? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Big Tim, have you ever thought of uh, pursuing a different career besides music? Um, yes, I actually want to get into social media marketing and managing. Basically, to describe that, I want to I want to manage people's you know business pages or entertainers or musicians and kind of like manage them and you know build them up and make them money. And uh, I just I really like social media and marketing because that's you know I have to do that for a living as well, doing what I do. And I think, you know, I could be on some P. Diddy stuff and really, like, P. Diddy the heck out of social media when the time is right, when I'm big enough to be able to, you know, put the music to the side for a bit and kind of help other people out. You're, you're kind of doing it in reverse. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you're weird. an entertainer that wants to do office work. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> it's like Bono saying, like, his ultimate goal is to be a head fund manager. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird, man. But, I mean, it kind of all, it kind of all meshes with the whole social media uh, entertainer slash musician thing as it is and I got pretty good at it so I think that I think I could potentially make a lot of money with it in the future and also just help other people out with it um, we got somebody that's uh, uh, that's asking I'm sorry have you ever played World of Warcraft um yeah wow uh, wow we're talking about wow I actually <laughs> have played World of Warcraft I think when I was like 18 like a couple times I kind of liked it but I never really got into it it sounds like drugs wow it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like a drug experience. It's listen. Much. I, I, I tried, tried playing it a couple it, times. It just it was not I, for me. I dabbled with WoW. It gave me a bad trip, Whatever. so I'm not really into it all like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. at parties, my friends would be doing it, but you know, I just hang out and watch. I tried playing Fable. <laughs> that didn't work out well. I tried play all, like all of those games. Uh, but then I found game. Heroin, and everything was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> heroin. I'm good at playing Heroin. That is really awesome. Um, we got one from Loriana. Uh, what is your biggest accomplishment in life? Not just like music, in life. Well, besides trying WoW for the first time, now that we got that out of the way, uh, my biggest accomplishment in life, man, is just 
<sighs> I just want to be happy, man. Like, I know it's, like, the stupidest, most cliche thing to say, but I, I mean really, man. Like, I just want to be able to be happy and wake up happy and go to bed happy and not have to stress about not being happy. Like, I want to be happy all the time. I want to just live off of something that I love to do. I want to get up knowing that when I go to, quote, unquote, work, a.k.a., whether it's, you know, going to the computer or, or, or going to a microphone, I want to know that I like doing what I do. I want to own a boat. And I want to go fishing whenever I want, and I want to eat good food, man. That's all I want out of life. And I want to be able to travel the world. I want to see the pyramids, man. I want to go to Egypt. I just want to be happy. That's my ultimate goal in life. There's pyramids in <laughs> Vegas, so you could take care of that with one of those weird, you know, or that. sit in a room and listen to somebody sell you something and get a free trip to Vegas thing. <laughs> um, Timeshares. Uh, we got a bunch of people asking, when are you and Jas going to get married? Diana is one of those people and some other people. <laughs> Shout out to you, Diana. Um, when are me and Jazz going to get married? Uh, well, if we do end up going to Vegas to see the pyramids, we'll probably get married in Vegas when we get, like, really drunk or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It's the right. American dream. Yeah, yes. we've, actually, we've actually told each other, and this is not a joke. This is serious because we do crazy stuff. We have literally told each other we cannot go to Vegas because we know that if we do, we will get married, and it's not a joke. We probably really would do it. <laughs> yeah, but see, then – Eh, that's not really a problem. If you know you'll do it, that means she would say yes if you got down on one knee and was like, oh, will you marry me? She'll be like, yeah. yeah. I said we can go get drunk and go do it for like thirty five ninety two. But Yeah, that's very true. We can go to one of those drive throughs and just get married. I mean, I mean the, the, the problem is she refuses to let me meet her dad, and her dad probably never will meet me, and well, he weird. has to like approve, and it's just a whole other story. Oh, gosh. that's weird. Yeah. Well, listen. That's where I list, uh, imagine meeting uh, my fiance's father, who I thought was Bob Marley. I was like, I'm gonna die. Like, the <laughs> guy, the guy, uh, listen, he was like, I know it's eight o'clock in the morning, but you want to drink a Heineken? I was like, I, I guess I have to. It was a test. You yeah. failed. I, I drank it. I was like, you yeah, drink oh it. Because he was like, I'm drinking. I already had like three or something like that. He was like, I had rum. Are you gonna drink the Heineken? He looked at me like I dare. That's my that. kind of father-in-law. Saying, I was like, I I'll drink it, sir. I drank. <laughs> and he was like, so you drink a lot? No, because I is this a what is this a trick question? You failed. You gave me alcohol. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Just no. Now was it alcohol in the glass or was it wow? No, no, no. It was. <laughs> it was. Yes, it was a lot of wow. Actually, <laughs> he was a wow dealer. Surprised. Oh, Surprised. there you go. Uh, better rates on the islands. He was free basing methamphetamines. <laughs> said uh, just looked at me and said, "Huh? <laughs> huh?" <laughs> um. Here's a. Here's some. Wow. This person gave us. Uh. Here's some questions for Big Tim. Um, what's your motivation for writing music? Name a song of yours that your fans um, or that you feel your fans can relate to the most. What's the most influential person in your life right now, and where do you see yourself in five years? Does this person work for us? I know, right? That's exactly what we would Give ask. Give them a job. They are great, man. These are questions we would ask. This is like, in-depth. Right. So okay, na name them one off at a time because I kind of got lost. One question time. number one uh, for you, Big Tim, sir. Uh, yes. What's your motivation for writing music? My motivation for writing music is uh, the reaction I'm going to get when I drop it. Like, when I go into the booth or I'm writing something, I think ahead, like, okay, what am I going to write about and how is it going to affect the person that listens and what is their reaction going to be? So that's the answer to the first question. All right, and the second question. Name a song of yours that you feel your fans can relate to the most. Oh. <sighs> Well, I have this song coming out called Depression. It's not out yet. Well, actually, yeah, it is. The audio of it is out on my Facebook somewhere. But we shot a music video for it in Detroit, and that's a very relatable song because I really, I really try to um, really stick to the fact that I suffer from like severe depression and anxiety, and I'm, I'm manic and all this terrible stuff because I know a lot of people in the world um, deal with it. And that song really, you know, relates to a lot of my group and my fans and my followers because. A lot of them suffer from depression and all that crazy stuff. So the song is called Depression. It's about being depressed and not getting out of bed and wanting to live but kind of being held back. So uh, look out for that, man. Depression. The music video will be out soon. Uh, hey, I'm so depressed. Instead of wearing black, I became black. Next question. Oh, God, um, your life is so bad. <laughs> who is the most influential person in your life right now? Uh, I would have to say my father, man, because my father was – um. He was an addict for, like, half my life, and, you know, I've seen my dad at his darkest, darkest times, man, and just horrible things I had to witness growing up, and the fact that I literally never thought my dad would beat his addiction, the fact that he beat it and he's now been clean for a while, and 
he went through the process and just seeing him go through that and be able to beat that and overcome that really inspires me because you know I get down I get in those moods like everybody else does and I think about giving up and I wonder if this is going to work but then I see that he did what he did and I'm like yo this is going to work this can happen you know that's true oh well there you go instead of it being like you know a musician or something he was real with that question yeah Tim is that a towel behind you Oh, yeah, it is. Are you in the bath? Where are you? Oh, he's, he's in his room. You need to clean up, buddy. <laughs> we need a maid need over to there. clean up. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> the last question is one that we would always ask. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I see myself, Married. man, just save bigger, yourself. more successful, and hopefully a little bit richer, man, and just happier. <laughs> save yourself and say married. Save your skin and say married. Married. Yeah, there you go. That's a good Married, call. locked in, and wow. giving up the dream. <laughs> that was him all by himself. Just married. You hear that? Married. Wow. Committed man here. Working at a nice 40 hour a week, nine to five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a, where I see myself. As the manager man. of the local Staples. Some decent <laughs> bennies. Nice 401k. Rap every other weekend <laughs> with, with my uh, weekend maybe, warriors. Maybe farmer's <laughs> market on Sundays. <laughs> That is awesome. That is exactly where I see myself. Man. He he purposefully falls away from the limelight. He'll get famous, really huge, and he'll be like, like, where are they now? Tim <laughs> manages his local Walmart. It's just like <laughs> Tim just, bought a subway in Ann Arbor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just completely out of the world, like obscure thing to do. He's just gone. That'd be great, actually. You just I'd go out with the bang, man. You. Hey, people that know you, you'd rap for them. When they're ordering their sub, you, like, wrap their sub back to them. <laughs> so not only does he own the franchise, he works there, too? Yeah, it's just, he bought it, and he's just working wow. there. He That's has smart. a disguise. I'm doing everything I can to be a normal Samaritan. Yeah, it's just, you know, I'm just here. I'm just, I'm, I'm, my name isn't uh, Big Tim. I look like the guy, but I'm not. I'm sorry. Who is, <laughs> who's this? What is the reason for doing what you do? Is this Nikki again? Oh, jeez. Shout out to you, Nikki, for asking such amazing, awesome, and many of questions. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, I want to say this really quick. Um, uh, uh, can you ask Big Tim what inspired him uh, to become a rapper? I love him. And it's followed up with, this is his girlfriend, Jasmine. Tell him he better see himself married before five years. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> that. What was the question she asked again? I wonder if it's, if it's really her that's weird. Yeah, just, if it's not her, it's even weirder. Yeah, it's just like uh, there's another Jasmine. that I wouldn't put it past anything posing. at this moment in time, man. Um, uh, the first question was, can you ask Big Tim what uh, inspired him to become a rapper? And then I love him. I love her too. Um, what inspired me to become a rapper? Um, oh, sorry. Basically, like I said, man, those all those rock and metal concerts I went to growing up with my father, man, just being at the concerts and being so young and, you know, when you're that young and you're in an environment like that and you got like a stadium with thousands of people and we used to sit real close, man, so we were right there and just the pure energy, man, like I loved it and I wanted to do it, man, so that's what got me involved in that and wanting to do that. <clears throat> all right, so um, we're getting ready to wrap up. There's uh, someone wanted to just show you some love from Cleveland. Keep pushing and always remain humble. You're doing great. We're proud of you, Heather, the Honey Badger, and Jimbo Neutron. I've been oh, to shouts out to them. That's yeah, that's Jimbo and his crew, man. That's my drummer and his crew, man. I've been to Cleveland, nice little city. Yeah, Cleveland's pretty nice. It's 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 it, Cleveland is uh I think was built by the same people that built Buffalo, which is originally where I lived for like 13 years, and they look similar. But I think Cleveland's like a little bit cleaner than Buffalo. <laughs> so the guys that built Cleveland looked at Buffalo and said, "You know what? Good enough." <laughs> yeah, it was like when God like washed away the earth. He's like, "You know what, man? I, I really messed up, so I'm gonna take Noah and just kind of like try to redo this." I think but I think Cleveland was like. The Noah redo of Buffalo. <laughs> I think they need to add to the sign, Welcome to Cleveland, the Buffalo of the West. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buffalo Part 2. Yeah, <laughs> we tried again, guys. We <laughs> failed. <laughs> Buffalo 2.0. Better? Much, question right? mark? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this time it's personal. <laughs> this time, yeah, exactly. It just sounds like horrible sequels. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, we chose this. <laughs> yes. Um... Love from Oseso. I don't know where this is. Um, yeah, and it's oh, it says this is really Jasmine. Haha. Ha. Just to kind of make sure that you know, she's not messing around. Something. Hi, about, Jasmine. How are you? <laughs> something about chestnuts and a vice grip, um, ball gags, what? and 
Yeah. Oh, she was trying to be undercover at first. That's the. This is the wrong show for that. Right? <laughs> Am I not supposed to be reading these out loud, Jasmine? Because I'm just going to keep reading everything you send us. You might as well just keep it going now, man. Jasmine, no swearing, though. We can talk about ball gags, but no swearing. <laughs> just... He's like, I'm all into that. I've been trying to break the ice on that subject for a while. If you saw some of the stuff in Jasmine's drawer, man, you would you would know what, what we're really talking about. I'm now going to get a subpoena through this. <laughs> this is gonna be like, I'm now suing you guys. Uh, yeah, Jasmine, you can go through the tool shed. Just no dirty words. Just exactly. Uh, no F-bombs. No F-bombs at all. <laughs> all right, so we're going to try something new. Um, I want to say we should have three people text us, like the first three people or or whatever that text us. Now she just wrote, Jesus, oh, my God. Um, no. Your girlfriend is traumatized. This is, this is good for us. This is great. This is what we wanted. Yeah. And she wrote in, hi. She's really slow at typing. You may want to look into that. She's just slow, man. <laughs> oh, that's... Wow, do you just call your girlfriend slow? <laughs> listen! Right, listen, the man... Listen, I didn't gonna... say mentally slow. Hey, I said physically hey, slow. Tim, Tim's soon-to-be ex-girlfriend. Uh, what, what are you up to? Well, well, she <laughs> says, I'm going to kill Ooh. So you don't have to worry because you owe you is dead. But you're fine. <laughs> so <laughs> whoever that is. Um, the people at the car wash are listening while I'm vacuuming. Laughing my ass off. This is great. Um, that's a lot of detail. We're at a car wash. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, isn't, it like, isn't a car wash as in like an actual It's car like I'm there. It's, I feel the it's suds like now. There. It's like I'm, I can hear it. They're vacuuming right now. I feel the suds now. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to choose three people. The first three people that um, text us, uh, I guess, or, or text us, call me is what you should text us. And the first three people that we see, um, we will call during the break. And you get to ask Tim one question. Um, and, well, tell people where they can hear your music. And tell them what's coming up next because we're wrapping up with you now. Awesome, man. Yeah, you can hear all of my newest music at my uh, website. It's BigTimKellums.com. B-I-G-T-I-M. K-E-L-L-A-M-S, BigTimKellums.com. You could uh, like me on Facebook. It's uh, Big Tim Kellums. You can go to Facebook.com slash Big Tim Official. My Twitter is very easy. It's Twitter.com slash Big Tim. I do follow everybody back, so hit that follow button. I'll follow you back instantaneously. My YouTube is YouTube.com slash Official Big Tim. Uh, my Snapchat is Big Tim underscore No Morals. And my Instagram is Big Tim Kellums. I think that covers pretty much everything. 